Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for episode 58 here on the latter part of August as we're almost ending the summer, basically. September is just around the corner. Trying to keep up with the latest in EV news, so uh, let me get right to it. A couple of charging stories I want to talk about first. Uh, I've talked about Shell in the past of how they're looking to implement um, DC fast chargers and level two chargers at various gas petrol stations around the world. Uh, I mentioned about PetroCanada doing the same here in Canada, where Shell is continuing that expansion in the country of Singapore. With 50 uh, kilowatt DC fast chargers, they have, uh, are go they're going to install 10 of them by the end of October uh, in at 10 different petrol stations, and that's about 20% of their coverage uh, so far in that country. The first one has already been launched, and um, they do expect these to, uh, to go take effect over the next year or so. Great to see Shell continue on with uh, expansion in other countries. Also staying with charging, let's talk about Scotland. They've been really going gangbusters when it comes to promoting EV adoption. In fact, they've hit over 1,000 charging points already, including some 200 that are DC fast charger. Um, the Charge Play Scotland network, as it's called, reached a milestone of over four, one, sorry, of over 1,000 publicly uh, available charging points. Uh, about 200 of those, or 20% of those of those charging points, are level three or fast uh, DC chargers at 50 kilowatt. Great to see Scotland continuing the EV movement by building infrastructure to spur, to at least drop that barrier of adoption for owners that uh, are unsure about infrastructure if they want to take a drive. Some car news. First one from Chevy. They've come out uh, with some specs on the 2020 Chevy Bolt, a Bolt with a B. Uh, of course, the Bolt no longer is being manufactured, so it's just the Bolt from an electrification standpoint. Um, and what they're doing is they're upping the range, the EPA range, from 238 to 259 miles, uh, which is great. Um, it actually improves the range to on paper anyway, and don't give me any comments backlash about one model versus another, but on paper it puts the Bolt EV ahead of the Hyundai Kona, uh, the Kia e-Niro or Niro EV, and the standard range Tesla Model 3. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now their Chevy isn't really saying what's causing this 8% inc this increase in range, uh, but we've heard through the grapevine or this article uh, stipulates that they've heard that it's uh, new battery chemistry just to get that little extra range. Still the 60 kilowatt hour battery pack that we're aware of. Um, so that's good to see. Good to see that uh, ranges are slowly increasing. If it's something, you know, Bolt's a decent selling car for Chevy. There are a lot in the lots though, so <laughs> they got to be pushing them a little bit more and maybe this little tweak will help them get there. Going to stick with car news with Porsche and the Taycan. I won't say a lot about it because I've covered it in previous shows. However, Porsche has announced that they've just finished 24 hours of track testing with uh, the uh, just-to-be-announced or to-be-GA-released Taycan uh, at the end of this month at Italy's Nardo Test Circuit. They ran it for 24 hours straight, and oh, the only time they stopped it was for charging, and during the charging, they did a driver change. So kind of like the 24 hours of Le Mans thing. They covered 2,128 miles during during this 24-hour period, which would be the equivalent about driving from Los Angeles to Atlanta, Georgia, if you were to do that. It was really to demonstrate the capabilities of the Taycan's new 800-volt charging system, which charged the car quick enough to cover the distance without long waits to recharge. In fact, the, the average wait time for recharging was about 10 minutes, or that's about what they planned. Um, and again, this system, this 800 volt system, which was adapted from the 919 hybrid Le Mans winning race car, um, is expected to provide up to 128 miles of additional range in less than 10 minutes. So the longer you charge, you go to 15 or 20, you'll be able to almost double that. Um, so great to see that they've, that they've worked out whatever, if they've had any kinks, that they're working them out in their final test. Uh, it really was their final hurdle before the car is scheduled for its September 4th debut. Good to see Porsche's already got a commitment of at least 40,000 of these units, if not more, that they've sold out. And I wish them all the best of success. A few shows ago, I mentioned about uh, the Mercedes EQV all-electric vehicle, which is a minivan, for lack of better words, basically. Well, they uh, have officially come out and released that. More information now. The the actual, you'll be able to see it at the Frankfurt Motor Show next month in September. Uh, and sales of this will begin in 2020. Now it's got a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. 
giving you a range of about 405 kilometers or 252 miles. I'm guessing these are WLTP numbers um, because it doesn't say EPA. So if the article is from a European manufacturer and doesn't specifically say EPA, then I my default is to WLTP. So EPA range is going to be a little bit smaller, but not so much. Um, so that 405 kilometers might be 370, 380-ish, and the 250 miles might be 226, 220, 230, something like that. So not too bad. Top speed, 160 kilometers an hour, 100 miles an hour. You don't need these things to be going crazy fast. It'll have a 150 kilowatt uh, DC motor, uh, sorry, electric motor with 204 horsepower and 362 newton meters of torque and that's the that's the number that gets you going from a stop it'll be front wheel drive only uh, accommodate fast charging up to 110 kilowatts it's kind of a neat number uh, 10 to 80 percent state of charge in about 45 minutes which is the standard rhetoric now from everybody and i'll have on board up to 11 kilowatt charging for level one level two applications so you can fully charge this from level two in about 10 hours or so uh, it's a great looking vehicle uh, if you've seen seeing the pictures and video run behind me it's just you know mercedes quality it'll be a per nice van no pricing um other than uh you know estimates that are given other than it's going to be in production in 2020 so keep your eyes on that and if anybody uh, any of the viewers in the fall i expect that this will this may um uh start launching pre-orders sometime before the end of this year i haven't heard that specifically from mercedes but if it does and anybody's on their list and they get something please send it to me i'd like to know when that happens Volkswagen is back in the news. There's a few spy shots floating up about the ID3 again and the Cross that'll be for North America. But I, uh, they actually took um, their uh, ID buggy out to a uh, event, beach event in California recently, and they, uh, you know, it's it's again a pre-production vehicle. So I'm sure they weren't jumping dunes and doing crazy things, but they were moving it around. Um, as you can see by the video and pictures going on behind me, it looks like they had a blast. It was, uh, you know, a throwback to the past, and I think that as a niche type vehicle that the the dune buggy is for was for vw i think it'll it'll have a good following and spe specifically in places like california and hawaii and uh, and other areas that have a lot of that interaction with coastal uh, elements uh, and a bit of off-roading there so good to see um again the specs on this thing will be a 62 kilowatt hour battery up to 250 Kilometers, which is LT, L, WLTP uh, cited here, 155 miles um, and 150 kilowatt wheel, rear wheel drive unit. So it'll be a lot of fun being rear wheel drive. You'll be able to boot that thing around in the sand and all kinds of other specs. I won't go into it. It's a very, very niche vehicle, obviously, but street legal. So you can be driving around the, the normal roads and then take it a bit of off road, depending on how there might be some outfitting uh, options for this but hey it's just nice to see vw continue out there to promote the id lineup and some of the fun sides of that lineup in the buggy well electrification of school buses i think is something i brought up in a show of many months ago but it's back in some of the news where the bluebird corporation i think everybody knows bluebird they're one of the largest bus manufacturers in north america a lot of their bus lines are uh, school boards uh, buy from Bluebird. Well, they've announced that they're going to, they've reached a milestone, excuse me, of more than 100 all electric school buses that have been ordered in North America so far. They've got three models their RE Electric, the Micro Bird, and the uh, G5 Electric, and the Vision Electric, which are all different sizes and different capabilities. Um, they have a bunch of these buses already in operation in the states of California, North Dakota, and Washington State. Um, and then they've got deliveries pended, uh, pending for more in California, in Colorado, um, New Jersey, New York, and Quebec here in the pro in province of Quebec here in Canada by the end of this year and well into 2020, they've got orders. So there's tremendous interest, of course, in electrifying school buses, never mind the health um, side of things, which is a whole new ball game. And I could spend an hour talking about the fumes coming from school buses and how that relates to uh, passenger and children's safety. That's that's a pretty serious thing. But um, certainly um, having these as uh, all electric zero emission vehicles is going to be a great comfort for parents and for, for kids and students riding those bikes. Looking at, at it from a school district side, of course, from an economics, it's um, proven that these things are, um, by, because they provide zero emissions and low maintenance, are going to save the board's money well over time, especially with the mainly, you know, shorter runs that school buses do, especially in more metropolitan urban areas and subdivisions, you know, the outskirts, 
suburbia of, of large uh, urban areas. But you know, some of these buses have a range up to 120 miles. So there's certainly no slouch if you need to do longer runs and they can charge during the day. So they can do a morning run, go charge during the day and come back and do that more, that afternoon run if it's, you know, like say 100 miles or something, which is not uh, uncommon, but not that frequent. So uh, good luck to that. Now they've partnered with Cummins, Cummins of course, which is a leading truck a power manufacturer of power plants and uh, Cummins uh, has a large support network across North America, uh, more than 200 wholly owned branch locations with over 3,200 service technicians. So they will be providing service for these fleets of EV buses, school buses that'll be happening. So good to see that they've got supply chain, they've got post sales support and service in place. Uh, just a matter of buying these things and getting them out there to take those really dirty school bus tailpipes off the roads. And finally, a quick story. I think I mentioned this truck before, but it just the, the title of the article um, kind of caught my eye. It's the world's largest EV never has to be recharged. Kind of sounds a bit phony like this Toyota self-charging thing. But anyway, that's another story. Uh, but there's a quarry in, in Bile, Switzerland um, that it's operating a 110 dump uh, dump truck 110 ton dump truck and it's an all-electric dump truck and I think I've had this on a show before so it's pretty cool um, but uh, it's it's at 45 tons and it actually ascends a 13 percent grade and takes on 70 70 uh, sorry 65 tons more of ore so it doubles its weight when it goes back down the hill and because of the regenerative braking it recaptures more than enough energy to refill the charger as at the base when it unloads and it goes back up again so this thing kind of just runs back and forth never really uh, by all test purposes having to be plugged in once it's at its initial fully charged which i thought is a pretty cool uh, cool beast here it's a 600 kilowatt hour battery pack so big enough for a whole bunch of cars um it weighs about 9,000 pounds itself just in the battery pack um yeah it makes 20 trips a day according to the the spokesperson for the site uh produces 200 kilowatt hours of surplus energy every day or 77 megawatt hours a year um, now, a typical dump truck in an ice or diesel or petrol fashion uses between 11 and 22,000 gallons of diesel fuel a year. That saves up to 196 metric tons of carbon dioxide greenhouse gases that are not being emitted into the atmosphere by using this electric dump truck. Wow, what a story that this is. I mean, you know, unfortunately, a lot of us won't experience anything like that. You know, if you are in hilly situations, you do know that you'll lose a lot going up, but you gain a lot of that back going down. And in some cases, gaining it all back might be very, very rare. But in this particular use case where it's a it's a uh, kind of a close uh, close situation where it's going from an ore up to a dumping ground and back to the ore, it's able to uh, you know, keep that initial charge and continue to recharge itself because of the characteristics of all electric vehicles. So that's just a fantastic story. Really happy to hear that. And I hope that more uh, commercial mining and oaring and other types of use cases are being looked at by companies uh, with this as an example. All right, well, that's it. That's the end of the show, episode 58 of the EV Revolution show. I thank you for taking some time and helping me to provide educating folks one tailpipe at a time because that's what I'm all about. Now, I wanted to, before I get into all the thank yous, I just want to announce the Fully Charged Live Austin, Texas show, of course, was supposed to be this fall and it got moved. So it's the first week of February. It's going to be February 1st and 2nd. So the first and second days of February of next year, still in Austin, Texas at the Circuit de America track should be a lot of fun um, tickets have now gone on sale as of this week for fully charged live North America so for my US viewers if you're planning on going down or Canadian viewers or UK viewers or wherever you are Mexico wherever you are if you're planning on going to this event I'm certainly going to be there I'm going to try my best to get there um, but if you are going, I worked out a deal with Fully Charged Live folks to give you 15% off, 1-5% off the ticket price by using a code, and I'll put the code here on the screen, it's EV Revolution, and it is case sensitive, so make sure it's capital E, capital V, capital R, and then lowercase for the rest, EV Revolution. When you check out for your tickets, there'll be a, a coupon or, or uh, some sort of gift card or whatever they call it. I haven't gone through the portal, so I don't know uh, what 
it looks like, but there'll be an element to put a discount code in for to receive 15% off the ticket price. Um, thank you very much for the Fully Charged Life folks for offering that to me and so that I can offer it to you guys to help you save a bit of money. So anyway, please take advantage of that discount code. And now again, thank you all for watching and for taking the time to listen to me and watch the show for your comments, your YouTube likes and subscribing, of course, is very important to me. If you can subscribe and tell others about it, that would be great. Uh, truly, truly humbled by that. Also humbled by Patreon and the support that I receive from Patreon. Thank you very much. Each and every show, I want to make sure I recognize Patreon uh, and the efforts that happen there. So until the next show, everybody, thank you again for watching. And please, uh, you know, stay safe out there. Have a great rest of the, the end of the summer, which is almost happening now. I may not get the next show out next week because I've got some... My wife's got a whole ton of family that's up uh, visiting and we've got to do a bunch of family stuff. So I don't know if I'll have the time to record next week, but I'll see how it goes. If not, it'll be in a couple of weeks. But everybody stay safe until the next time I see you. Uh, we'll, we'll just chat then. Take care. Bye-bye.